On today's episode, we have a wife on an unpaid maternity leave, an OP having mixed feelings about their boyfriend, the shortest story ever told on this podcast, a listener who hopes to have a successful pregnancy, and a personal write-in with a beautiful message. For patrons, we have a boyfriend who cried in front of their girlfriend for the first time. So head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network to hear that bonus story, ad free episodes and additional content. Reddit on wiki starts right now. Get therapy. What is up, Wikimaniacs? It is I, your punny Pinoy John. With another episode of Reddit on Wiki for our Reddit readings on Mondays. As usual, we have my co-host today, the dashing, the handsome. He looking good in that cream shirt. <sighs> Mr. Josh Shell, what's up, my guy? How's it going? I think I'd be looking better with some Valentine merch, but oh, it hasn't come no. in yet. Not yeah. yet, not yet. We'll, we'll be getting that out shortly. With that said, Wikimaniacs, Purchase your Valentine's Day merch, spread giant all over the world this uh, Valentine's <laughs> Day season and uh, buy it for you, buy it for your lover, buy it for your mother for all I care, but just buy it. <laughs> Could you imagine giving that to you? <laughs> <laughs> My mom would rock that shit. She have no idea what's going on. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, Sean is still out today. Unfortunately, he's um, he's still he's still out for personal reasons. But as usual, we're wishing my guy the best. Uh, we love you, brother. Hopefully, uh, you're back by next week. But uh, we got a we got a pretty pretty good solid um, episode today. The last three episodes, I'm gonna say, or the last three stories, they're all gonna be personal write-ins. So, oh, it's, that's uh, exciting. It's from Wikimaniacs and our subreddit. Um, no, I- I'm trying to go take our subreddit back because a lot of the uh, stories have been really <laughs> depressing. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to choose like little lighthearted ones when I get the chance to host. So, uh, there are some anger inducing ones, but of course, nonetheless, that's expected. Nonetheless, yeah. that's expected, but <laughs> it's, it's always good to talk about those situations too. So for sure. Um, okay. Ready to get started. Uh, first story. Yeah. I heard something about maternity leave and I'm uh, very interested if this is the anger yes. inducing one. <laughs> it is, which is crazy because you picked one that's kind of similar to what we covered uh, last Friday's episode. So it's going to be kind of similar, but I really want to hear your takes. And of course, I want to hear uh, the Wikimaniacs takes on that one. So first story cross posted by one of the goats, Phoebe the fan. Hell yes. And um, the title is I'm on unpaid maternity to leave. My husband still expect me to pay half the rent. Is this fair? Oh, I, initial thoughts. Well, I mean, I hope you're also getting paid on maternity leave. Uh, but I, I mean, I know maternity leave in most places you get paid less than your, uh, yeah. like r- original paycheck. So I think it's fair of you to ask to pay for less. Uh, like it should be. Uh, percentage wise, uh, you know what I mean? Plus you're doing a lot of work anyway, like taking exactly. care of a baby. So yeah. I think you should have a break uh, for paying for anything. But my, my thing with that is it's a marriage is a partnership. It should sure. never be like one upmanship over the other, but uh, well, you, you'll see, I think you'll, you'll kind of get mad about the, the situation for <laughs> okay. this one. So yeah. Cause I, right now I'm like, I'm like, you know, there's a potential where this is fine, but like knowing most of the stories in our subreddit, I'm like, yeah, I mean, Probably unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely unreasonable. Okay. okay, so this is already anger-inducing first sentence. My husband earns four times more than me. I earn sixty-eight thousand, and he earns two hundred eighty thousand. God damn! <laughs> I wish I was making that money. <laughs> <Same. laughs> Golly, um, our rent is two thousand six hundred uh, a month. And it doesn't say um, if it's dollars or not. So I'm not sure with that. Okay. I mean, that's um, pretty average around here, which is sad. Yeah, it's uh, expensive. But also, okay. So right off the bat, sorry to interrupt, but like she, he's paying? expecting to pay half already when he makes four times his amount. Exactly. Dude. <laughs> that's insane. You should be paying a, a, a fifth, a quarter. I don't know what the translation would be, but. I mean, less. <laughs> if, if, if I was making $280,000, I'd tell my partner, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> like pay oh, for yeah. other stuff, yeah. pay for the other shit. Like, you know, maybe like our travel, like food or whatever, but mortgage, 
I got it. Like two hundred eighty. Sure. I can do so much with two hundred eighty thousand oh, dollars. Oh my damn. god, crazy. Ooh, anyways, I can finally say this now that Sean's not here. Eat the fucking rich people. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm gonna be on that boat though. Um, we've been splitting rent fifty fifty, which is insane. Uh, since we moved in together before we got married, the arrangement did not change after we got married, and now that we have a baby, with me having zero income, so I'm relying on my personal savings. I say personal because we don't have a joint account. We are currently looking for a house and I'm also expected to contribute for the deposit, oh. which they put 75% of my total savings. Is this fair? What is the best way to approach this? And they wanted to uh, highlight a few things. A few things to highlight. Utility bills used to be split 50-50, but since I stopped working, he pays for them. Good. Um, the start. Since th- <laughs> that's a start. Since there is no joint account and he doesn't give me any allowance for baby stuff, I ended up buying most of them. Baby is only four months old and breastfed exclusively. What the fuck? He pays for most of the grocery bills and dine out. If I go by myself, I have to pay, so I try not to. He funds our overseas travel once a year to visit his family. We don't have any loan or debt. Okay. That's kind of like what their thing is. Well, for me, there's a red flag where he didn't pay for any of the baby stuff. That's yes. pretty fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, especially if he's making the most. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd have a honest sit down with your partner. and Because uh, it sounds like she's not making any money on maternity leave. No. That's crazy. I thought you had. Um, if, if I were to guess in the U.S. America? America okay, sucks. I don't actually know the laws in America on maternity leave. But in Canada, you do get paid. So that sucks. Honestly, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we live in a dystopian place, so it is a dystopian future. You're right. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, America is so backwards at times; it's ridiculous. Yeah. So first off, I mean, uh, there's so many things wrong with it. Like, you should be paying proportional to what you're making. So if you're making Mm -hmm. nothing, then you should be paying nothing towards the house. And that's not because, you know, you're lazy or whatever. It's because you're on maternity leave, taking care of your fucking child. (laughs) Yes. So he should be paying for the, the most of the expenses, if not all of the expenses, uh, as well as making sure the baby is comfortable with, you know, clothes, bi- diapers, toys, whatever he, they need. Um, and so that's, to me, that's insane. So you should have that conversation where it's like, okay, I want access to like your account in case we need stuff for the house or the baby or whatever, like this, cause I can see a place where this turns into last Friday's story where mm-hmm. it's like, this is financial manipulation and he doesn't, he gives you a quote unquote allowance, uh, even though you're doing the most around the house and with the baby. Yeah. And, and I think, I think some of the priorities too need to shift. Right. And, uh, based on some of the context that they gave, they said that he funds our overseas travel once a year to visit his family. Uh, the priorities got to change at times. Yes. Like you, you do have a family and, and, and that's your wife and your, your, your kid. Right. So, some of those, some of those uh, fundings need to be re- reallocated because it seems like she's paying for stuff for the kid, but, which is also his kid too, which is, yes. which is uh, ridiculous. Maybe your family has to come up with a different way to like meet up or like they, you fly them in to visit you or something, some sort of different aspect of that. And, and the gross, like, granted, he does pay for, for, for some other shit, like the grocery bills or dining out. I mean, cool. You do that. That I feel like that's a bare minimum, but. It's also insane because four times of what you're making, that is like, you should be able to contribute, right? Like you, yeah. you should be, contribute more like what you were saying, Josh. And, and this is what kind of cracks me up because we always have a talking point where like every, most of the time on, on, on Reddit, the actual Reddit itself or the actual subreddit itself is usually have some wild takes. And then our mm-hmm. subreddit usually has like, a more reasonable, Pretty insane cool, takes, cool right? Collected takes, cool yeah. Coll- yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think you're going to get a laugh out of this one. So okay. from the actual subreddit of the original post from r slash marriage, uh, dear lower score parsnip lower score 6802 said, this is financial abuse. Start charging him for childcare and cleaning services. Even when you return to the workforce, you should not be paying half, which is kind of where we're kind of yeah, going. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'd, just I'd have a conversation with him first to be like, yeah, uh, like pay for these expenses uh, because I'm not making any money. And then like have a conversation going forward about how you want to structure payment when you go mm-hmm. back into the workforce uh, and have it proportional to what you make. You know what I mean? Your, your partnership, it should be 
fine a partnership to pay a proportional <laughs> amount. You know what I mean? Yes. Agreed. And and then on our subreddit, people commented, and this is from Tyrion Reynolds. They put, obviously the baby needs to step up and pay its share of the rent. <laughs> That's the most rational take I've ever heard. And then uh, under that, Water Princess 78 put, the baby won't. They never do. They are just manipulating milk drinking moochers. <laughs> Shake my head. Got no dang morals. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, where is it? Uh, Fuck them kids. There it exactly. Is. <laughs> so our subreddit still kind of got that right. They know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those babies. Uh, <laughs> those moochers. <laughs> moochers. Always drinking milk, taking my damn nutrients out of my body. <laughs> Always shitting uh, everywhere, leaving in their bassinets, if you know, you know. <laughs> oh, insane. <laughs> All right. Uh, story number two. This one is cross-posted by Firegem09, originally from r slash relationship advice. The title is, my 29 female husband, 30 male, is becoming more and more feminine. Okay. I mean, what do you define that as? That's true. Okay. Well, I guess we'll find out. All right. So I, 29 female, have been in a relationship with my husband, 30 male, for five years. Married for one. He always had some feminine hobbies slash traits. For instance, he took ballet classes while he was in college um, and, they, and, they put, and was doing them at the time we met. Okay. He, men, he, men can do ballet. Dude, you know I, I mean? feel like men who do like ballet or like gymnastics... They are some of the most strongest fucking yeah. dudes out there, man. Well, like, I mean, Sean, not ballet, but he dances. Dances. I'm like, I'm like damn, he I wish I could do that. dances well. Yeah, he does. My guy <laughs> can move. Yeah. God. So just off the I bat, wish I, that, that's not like a... Yeah, it's not a feminine thing. A feminine thing. It's just a, a hobby or a exactly. sport. Yeah. Um, he has always had plenty of female friends, and he worked for three years in an all-women workplace. Also, his best friend is gay, and he sometimes go, goes out with him in a group to gay bars and clubs. Side note on that one, uh, I too I work on like an all-women uh, team. I have been for like the past five years. Like most, even in like the past three years that I've worked for like different places, most of the leadership are women. Most of my coworker are women. That shit don't bother me. And yeah. I played in a in a, a LGBTQ like volleyball league for like years too. Went to gay bars with like during like uh, um, some of their like awards nights or like just get together. That's just a fucking vibe, bro. Like they're for so sure. like happy yeah. and happy and like accommodating. So I don't know. I, I, this doesn't seem like this doesn't scream feminine to me at all. It's just they're the set of friends that they like. You know, yeah. the boyfriend had. It's who they it's who they feel comfortable with. It's who they have fun with. Like. Who cares? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I could accept all that and it, did, it didn't bother me much. Although I did worry in the first two, three months of dating that he might be closeted gay. Those concerns uh, quickly abated. And then they put, I discovered he has a very high libid libido and is clearly attracted to me and is turned off by guys. But in the last year, he has had something of a transformation. He has grown his hair long, adopted a skincare routine, he is dressing well and learning about color matching. He has a, a hair care routine that is more onerous. Is that the word? Uh, I think so, yeah. Onerous than my own. He has gotten into self-care, including going to spas, massages, saunas, and having regular baths with bath bombs. That's So he's just taking damn. care of himself. <laughs> yeah, and okay. which is wild because of so much stories that we read. It's just guys that can't even wash their own ass. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and to, on top of that, like he just turned 30 as someone who is just about to turn 30, like, fuck yeah, you. you start thinking about stuff like that. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Will my skin be good when I'm 50? Will my hair still be here? Like you have those nope, thoughts. Not and me. so like <laughs> for sure. Well, I mean, look at my forehead, but oh, uh, I got a five head brother. <laughs> uh, like it's something you think about. And so like, I can imagine maybe having that realization be like, Oh, I'm, I want to take care of my skin. I want to take care of my, my yeah. hair. I have also grown my hair out uh, in the past year and uh, I try and take care of it more now because you know, it, it takes a little bit more. Um, it does. Same with my beard yeah. and stuff like that. Like uh, as you grow older, you learn to take care of yourself more or you sh should learn to take care of yourself more and care about self care and stuff like Dude, that. So self care is so important. And it's, it's one of those things where it, it's not, it's not just defined by being a woman or like, you know, 
Yeah. It's so frowned upon for men to be able to like, oh, I like to put moisturizer. We'd rather have, cal- like guys would rather have calluses, right? <laughs> like, I don't want that shit, bro. Like, I want my fucking hands to be smooth as hell. Yeah. It's so funny because like I use a uh, beard cream. Which essentially yeah. is just moisturizer. <laughs> Which is, yeah. But you have to like uh, to get to get me into it. I was like, oh, it has to be manly moisturizer. <laughs> has to have the word beard in it or sandalwood. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I got to the point that when Julia orders stuff in like Sephora, I'm like, can I have some? <laughs> that shit's tight, bro. I'm like, yeah, this shit. This just yeah. smells good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, to continue on, then this week he got his ears pierced. I asked him why he would pierce his ears, and he said that he thought it looked good and he wanted to wear earrings. I did have my ears pierced at one point, uh, but I got them closed off. Um, he is currently wearing a small emerald green studs in each ear. This is all very feminine, and I'm starting to worry that there might be something else deeper going on that he could uh, that could be bad for our relationship. Has anyone ever encountered this before? Should I talk to him about it and ask why he's doing all this? Or should I try to let it go? Okay, so this is just traditional, like try to put him in a traditional male role. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like the opposite of what we used to dealing with, uh, where it's men trying to put women in traditional female roles. Uh, yeah. So I, it sounds like he's just getting comfortable taking with his own himself. skin, yes. taking care of himself. I mean, I would never get my ears pierced because I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it does hurt. I hated it. I, I, had it, it. I had it like here, like here, and then like the other. I'm like, ouch, this shit hurts. Man. Yeah. But also like, uh, like they're he, just expressing himself in ways he wants to. And like, I, I truly don't understand what the concern is. Like if, if like the sex is good, uh, everything else, then what are you really worried about? I, I don't understand. <laughs> she's, she's giving me like a closeted bigot vibe. Kind of. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Cause it's like. Like if is is your relationship strained anyway by this or like are you just it making don't sound things like up? It. So I I truly don't understand. It sounds like the problems with you and and maybe you should uh, get therapy yeah. and, and figure yeah. out your own biases and stuff like that. Yeah, it's starting to sound a little homophobe. Like just reading all that, it, yeah. it's probably right. They were probably raised in like a more traditional like household where. Men are supposed to look a certain way, act man, a certain drink way. Beer, watch yeah. football. <laughs> Chug. I don't know. Like I said earlier, man, like it, that, that's if it's it's something that like he's passionate about, his hobby, uh, that's his hobby. Those are the friends that he has. And it seems like it's not affecting anything about your your life, your relationship, hell, your sex life. So you're getting piped. So I don't I don't, I don't know why she's <laughs> complaining good, about, good by the about this. <laughs> exactly. So um, wanted to, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, wanted to put a little more context because OP did uh, clarify like a few things. Okay. Uh, so one of, someone commented, uh, basic lower score quantity 9430 commented, uh, some very tough masculine men wear studs in their ears, have an extensive skin and hair, uh, hair care routine because men start to lose hair around 30 and their skin changes too. Yes, yep. on the losing hair part. Um, why don't you just sit down and talk to your husband about why he does each one of the things that you see a problem with? His answers may be entirely different from what you are assuming. To which then um, OP responded, well, I did ask him about some of it, actually. And he said, for hair, he has always wanted to have long hair, but couldn't for his entire life due to school slash work dress codes, which sucks. Completely reasonable. Yeah, I also, same thing. Yeah. Uh, he's worried that he will start balding soon and sees the next couple of years as his last chance to try it out. A hundred percent. That's exactly valid. what I was thinking. <laughs> Perfectly valid. Yeah. Um, skin. He got frightened by some sunspots on his nose and so started using SPF daily. Then one thing led to another and he fell down the rabbit hole of skin care. Yeah. Perfectly valid. So reason. taking care of his skin. Yeah, exactly. For the yes. reasons <laughs> to take care of yourself. Hair care routine. He's worried that unless he keeps his hair healthy, people will judge him as a messy man who has an unkept hair. I always come out looking like a bear coming out of a hibernation, so I get it. <laughs> I don't have a hair care routine, and I should start. I should really start taking care of yeah, myself. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, for color matching, he reckons his friends, and they bracketed mostly female, used to poke fun at him for how he dressed. It caused him to try to learn about color matching and how to dress himself. He sounds like he's maturing. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could. I have a Same. hard time with it. <laughs> Me too. 
<laughs> most of the most of the good things I own are from Sienna. She bought them for me. <laughs> I'm literally wearing a, like a Disney shirt from Target because that's all I'm like, oh, okay, this is like six dollars. <laughs> I might as well buy it. Yeah. I do not know how to dress at yeah. all. I mean, I Sean's try. Sean's a different beast. It's Sean, Sean can dress. He's, yeah, he can yeah, dress. He's on a different level. Making fun of me about my gym membership. This motherfucker has like expensive ass <laughs> jackets and shoes all the time. <laughs> He'll never hear this. And then um, for bath bombs slash spas slash saunas, he feels envious of the self-care culture he thinks exists amongst women. And he is envious of the sauna culture in Europe and Japan. He says he wants to be able to relax and unwind in the same ways. I got roasted on the last time saunas were brought up and I said I didn't like it. <laughs> Apparently I'm oh. at war with the finish. <laughs> uh, well, you're finished with the finish. My God. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, I never said you can't like it. I just said I don't like it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was so sad. I couldn't do the onsen or like the spas in Japan because I have tattoos. I really wanted to experience it. Oh, can you not do it because of that? You can't. Like you can't oh. do it publicly if you have tattoos. Um, we wanted to do like a, get a private one, like by Mount, uh, Mount Fuji, but it was really expensive. So mm. we're like, maybe next time, but right. always wanted to, I, I've heard nothing but great things about like the sauna experience, um, in Japan, but someday I'll okay. get there. Yeah. Anyway, that was just a, that was just a tangent, but like, I mean, I, I feel for that. Like as someone who I'd never had a massage up until last year, the year before. And like, really? cause I, I, I mean, I don't know, like I, as a man, like, I'm just like, I'd never considered getting one. It always seemed mm. like a weird concept to me. <laughs> and so I got one with Sienna one um, for like Valentine's Day or something. And uh, yeah, I'm like, damn, I could use more of these <laughs> and like Dude. more self-care and more like sauna spas and stuff like that. Um, Dude, for sure. Next time, next time the boys meet, fuck that. We're going on a fucking pedicure. <laughs> me, you and Sean, bro. I did that too for the first time. Uh, Isn't it nice? Yeah. Well, it it was mostly nice, and then uh, they cut my nail too short, and I get oh, I'm, you got ingrown. I'm inherent to get like just all the time ingrown every time I cut. Oh. Doesn't matter what I do, and so I had a really bad one after that. Damn, <laughs> I was like, yo, I don't know if I could do Ju this again. Julia took me to like a nice fancy one. They started putting fruits on my fucking legs. I'm like, I feel like I'm being marinated right now. Yeah. Fucking love it. She's actually cooking you up, John. You're gonna hey, be in her next book. I want be delicious. Oh, I care. I'm gonna be a snack. <laughs> oh full, my god full dinner baby <laughs> i am all right so moving on to the next story and i wish sean was here because he'd get a good laugh out of it but oh, no. literally it is the shortest story ever told in our podcast okay and this one is a personal story from major uh major midscore mention 8084 the title is this podcast is affecting my life. <laughs> okay. Hopefully positively, but I guess <laughs> we could go another way. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. I guess we'll see. Again, really short story. I'm a college student. I just said standard deviation in my statistics <laughs> class. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> for causing that it's funny because i i do that in my real life too now uh, on the occasions I'll, I'll i'll put sean in words that don't belong and yeah I'm like, god damn it mid scores is another one i always forget Dude. To type in <laughs> lower score i'll do that I <laughs> i've said lower score so many times already yeah. and, uh, during meetings and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> These people think I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably thinking I'm a dumbass, but oh my God. Well, well sorry, major uh, mentioned 80, ap 84. Apologize. <laughs> yeah. We didn't mean to put that in your life's equation. You know what I mean? So, oh uh, God. Uh, appreciate you writing in. And uh, now to a more, not longer, but it's, it's an actual length, a good length story. A, a regular story. <laughs> regular story. And this is also uh, a, a personal um personal story and this one is submitted by blue bedside table and confirmed listener because they kind of addressed us okay and uh the title is hopefully a wholesome post and they put yes i listened to this pod hell yes <laughs> yes so uh i think I they knowing. heard my my cries and my pleas for having more wholesome stories so keep sending them our way yes um there is there is a trigger warning for this one unfortunately okay and uh there is a mention of uh infertility for for this story okay. so they put hi everyone and then and they put in brackets if the boys read this it would be awesome but honestly i'm just 
here hoping for some wholesomeness and warm and cuddly feelings. Well, Blue Bedside Table, we are reading it. We're here. We're here. Uh, I just really wanted to share some good news. And in the podcast last week, they were pretty bummed out with all the bad slash sad stories. <laughs> so I wanted to bring in something different. Me Thank too. You. I was also bummed Thank out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pregnant. This is such a wanted pregnancy. And I've struggled with uh, endometriosis. Ooh, I'm pronouncing oh, that wrong. No, okay. And endometriosis. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and they put chronic pain condition for all okay. my life and infertility for almost six years. Every month, I would stare at a blank pregnancy test and weep, watch my friends have babies, and hold them and kiss their foreheads while I could only dream and hope and cry myself to sleep. It took many years of infertility treatments, including three major hospital stays and two surgeries. And we finally did IVF. I don't want to bore you with details, but the second attempt worked, and this time, for the first time, those pregnancy tests have two lines in them, hey. and I almost fell to my knees, and when I saw it for the first time, two lines. So Hell yes. first off, congratulations. We're so happy for you. That's awesome. Um, I close my eyes and I talk to my baby. Think about the lullabies I want to sing them. Imagine their hand wrapped around my finger as they sleep. I imagine their perfect baby smell, the rhythmic breath on my chest, the first time they'll smile at me. It makes me so humbled and thankful for my husband, for modern science, and most of all, past me who never gave up. Also, love the shout out to the husband. We always have shitty ones here. It's nice to hear. <laughs> it's nice to hear that there's good a ones. chance. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Keep shouting them out if you got good ones. Um, it's still early in my pregnancy, so there is always the possibility of loss. I am aware of that, but my God, do I want to celebrate this baby every second of every day. Thank you, Reddit on Wiki, for being there for the countless hours of entertainment and giving me hope in humanity. A world I want my baby to grow up in. Holy shit, that made me cry. Um, <laughs> I wanted, to share, I wanted to share this story for me, a stranger, because you've made my life better and brighter. Thank you for letting me share. Boom, get to you right on that last sentence. Sorry. That's awesome. I mean, I, I, it's so funny when people like say that we've been a part of their life. It's, 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 a, it's a weird feeling, you know what I mean? It is. But I get it. Because we're idiots. Because <laughs> I have podcasts <laughs> that I listen to that I'm like, yeah, like I've listened to these through hard times. And uh, yeah, so it's very cool that we can be there for someone. Very happy for you and your your husband. Uh, and oh, yeah. I wish nothing but the best for you guys going forward. Yes. Update us, please. When you have a healthy baby and they're cuddling your fingers, please let us know. I know we say fuck them kids all the time, but uh, we love that, that you're, you, you know, you're going to have a healthy one. And we're yes. really, really excited for you and your husband. And uh, congratulations. Uh, and, and, and yeah, you should, you should be happy. You should celebrate that because there's a lot of work that you guys had to put in to make that possible. And we're so proud of you. And thank you for writing in and sharing that with us. Yes. <gasps> oh, damn. Oh, all right. Last story. My stories have been short. So, uh, or my episodes have been short because yeah, I can't was talk mad a lot. I was under an hour last time. John. Well, it's going to be lower than an hour again this time <laughs> around. People. We'll see. I can't read yet because my voice still fucking hurts. <laughs> um, last story of today. And this one is also a personal write-in from... Uno underscore Zippo underscore Hippo. And there's also a trigger warning for this one. Uh, it is mention of unaliving. Okay. All right. So today marks an anniversary of my attempt of unaliving myself. The last few years was a complication of the most strenuous and painful times of my life. Yet on the days when I genuinely laughed, tightly hugged someone I loved, got to enjoy moments, I would have never experienced if I had ended my life. It reminded me of all the beautiful moments I'd never get to experience if I had. I wrote this as a hope that it reaches those who are in the midst of the same darkness, to know they're not alone in that same battle. The path of pain is never one we journey alone. As someone who has long battled depression, I try to reflect on all the moments that brought me joy, to remind me of those I love who make life worth staying for. To remind me that even in the midst of pain, joy is profoundly more real than the lies depression feeds us. And I understand the darkness depression brings and the deep, deep suffering that comes with it. It convinces us that, it convinces us that life isn't worth living. That reaching out makes us burdensome. That opening up makes us weak. That suffering with mental illness equates to being somehow less than. It's the lies of depression that keep so many locked in its prison. 
and the silence that keep us behind its walls. It holds us hostage from remembering all the moments we love and all the moments we would miss. Something my mom taught me when things got really dark is we would create a gratitude list from A to Z. Oftentimes, it was the silly things, like A for avocados, things like that. It went from being stuck in that void of darkness to laughing. It didn't make the pain go away. It didn't make the darkness disappear. But it subdued it. Because it's moments like that I would miss. Being able to make another gratitude list with her and laugh. Being able to find a new trail or find a new podcast like this one. It's a remembrance, the little moments in time, even during the darkest of seasons, where joy was found and felt. Because those moments are unfinished. I may not know the battles you face or the wars you are fighting that may not see or ever know of. For anyone reading this, I'm glad you're here today. Ooh. Damn. That was one of the most beautiful things we've read on the show, (laughs) I think. Uh, Shit. Oh, my God. Um, I don't care. People can see the shit for free. But I I purposely need that uh, personally. Um, I've also been kind of going through a little bit, too. Shit's just been busy. I've been consuming myself with like work. And you know, like that's one lesson that I kind of wanted to like teach myself too is um be more um be more appreciative of life because uh we always try to ooh, did not expect this today. <laughs> always kind of like it it's it sucks because you always try to take a backseat, like you're always thinking of like hustling and just getting to somewhere, like you're always thinking ahead, you're always wanting to be like, I want to get here and want to get that. But I never stop to ever consider like fuck. I never take the journey and appreciate like the day to day, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's really one thing I wanted to change about myself this year. Uh, I've been trying to say thank you to like more people, like as much as possible, just, just so they know I appreciate them, you know? So, uh, especially the past couple of years that I've had too, like personally, just hearing that shit is like, who I did not expect this, but you're good. Uh, dude. You're good. Uh, Damn, people are getting this shit for free. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> but that was possibly the most beautiful thing like I've ever read in a while. And uh, I'm going to take your advice, Uno Zippo Hippo, and uh, appreciate you for writing that in. Yeah. I, I don't know what I could say more touching than I'm what so you just said. Sensitive, <laughs> no, that's, that, I mean, it's, it's yeah. beautiful that uh, it can touch you like that. Like, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I've been through hard times as well. Luckily, I've, you know, it's been actually a, for for me, it's been a good few months, which uh, I'm happy about. And, you know, like with our wedding coming up, I, I'm also trying to, like you said, live in the moment, enjoy some things. And uh, you kind of get lost in the yeah day to day. So, yeah, I'll definitely take the advice and, you know, enjoy it a little bit. Uh, and, and like we get lost in it, too, you know, like also like just the amount of like content we make as well like you know sometimes we don't really take it for granted like when we get those those reviews about people like saying good things about how it helped uh their lives like for the longest time i would always went like how <laughs> how is that even possible like <laughs> yeah. we're just talking like you know we're, we're just having fun just yes we're three, telling stories three friends reading stories <laughs> exactly like it, it, it doesn't like really register me sometimes but i think uh and, and I don't want to get ahead of myself and I don't want to like put ourselves in like some sort of a pedestal, but really a lot of times words matter, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and, and especially someone who beautifully wrote uh, something this powerful, like that reading, like this is, I read it before that and I had the same, the same reaction. I fucking bawled and cried too. So um, I, I am more like appreciative when people leave those stuff because it's, it's hard to be vulnerable. Right. And yeah. um, it's hard to like display feelings and especially with a lot of um, trust me, I know is the least of motive person on the podcast. <laughs> I'm the most emotional. <laughs> Damn, I wish Sean was here. I, I, I know Sean would have cried. Oh, he would have. And I feel like I don't know. I feel bad because I don't. But I just no, nah, I, nah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't have that reaction to things, but nah, I, I mean, I'm, I feel it. I just don't express it, if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm fucking sensitive as shit. Like there'll be times I'll be <laughs> crying fine. to like. I'll be crying to my wife sometimes too, but like, you know, it's just one of those things where like, uh, it's, it's okay. And I know a lot of, some people like ru- uh, watching this that like are not like fans of the show or listens to us and seeing me for the first time doing this shit. <laughs> Could you imagine this probably is your call- first episode? <laughs> <laughs> probably gonna call me a bitch. And you know what? I don't think I don't give a do fuck. <laughs> and if oh, you so- do, it's okay. 
some incel may be watching might, but we get those That's comments okay. anyway. So it doesn't you know matter. what? You know what? Y'all see me cry at camera for free. So y'all better sign up for Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to cry even more. Yeah. Uh, Sean would be did. crying at that part. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but Sean never listens. So like, I don't think he'll see this, but no, he I will tell him like, dude, I like cried for free and he'll yeah. be really disappointed. Be, in me. Yeah. Super upset. It's like, are you fucking kidding me for free? He's going to start crying. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The amount of money. But, uh, <laughs> well, if you got past to this with Maniacs, appreciate you for letting me like vent out a little bit. And, and, uh, Aileen, it's funny. Like Aileen, like had a, we had a conversation with Aileen, like when the, uh, when we stopped recording and, uh, one thing also resonated when, uh, she had a conversation with us. She was just like, uh, she was saying something about like, you know, like you, you guys are pretty cool. And uh, a lot of times people are very like performative when it comes to like how they display themselves in, uh, you know, in like a, a social media fashion. Yeah. Podcasts uh, or, or anything like that. Just saying crazy things to get clicks or views. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I, that's probably one thing that I'm really proud of about us in this show. And again, this is me uh, being like grateful and gratitude. You kind of see what you get from us. Like this is us. In real life. Yeah. So uh, we talk more sports and stuff behind the scenes, but <laughs> that's about the only difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I think like you, it was, which is great to have fans like we're comfortable to show like kind of, you know, like our, our, our authentic self. So uh, yeah. if you got this far, thank you. Thank you for indulging me and letting me, uh, uh, I, had, I had built up emotions. So uh, that's why. It <laughs> that's kinda... okay, dude. It's all right. It's all good. <sighs> all right. Well, moving on to our next uh, next topic or next segment, beautifully curated by the amazing Underbaki. Oh, go again, coming up with a a new a new concept, new show. So uh, be uh, be on the lookout for that one. Yes, but um, this is another get to know your host type <gasps> of uh, segment. Whoa! So uh, usually Sean is with us, so hopefully he'll answer this on a live chat if he ever sees it. But uh, it's okay. <laughs> I know that's not going to happen, but no, uh, it won't. <laughs> no. First question, Josh, you might have some stake in this. You, you, you said you, you kind of watch it, but okay. who do you want to win the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, yeah. Cause uh, this is funny. Cause this is like what I was saying. We talk sports behind the, the podcast. Cause I've been, yeah. I don't follow football most of the year until the Super Bowl. And mm -hmm. that's only because like Sienna's family is really into football. Like her dad coached, uh, her brother coached, he played as well. So they all watch and they do like a, a survivor pool. Like you pick yeah. a team that you think is going to advance the next round and then you pick a different, you can't pick that team again. So I've been asking John and Sean for advice. Cause I'm like, I don't know anything <laughs> about these fucking teams. <laughs> hey, if you had followed my advice too, I got it perfect last I game. Did. Or last I did set. follow your advice and, and it got me to the next round. So thank you very Hell much. Yeah. John. Uh, when this comes out, I have no idea if I'll be in, but, uh, <laughs> I think, well, at first I thought the 49ers were going to make it all the way, but they've had some injuries and not played as well as I thought. So I'm going to go with mm -hmm. the, uh, is it the Ravens? Or Baltimore Ravens. Yes. Baltimore Ravens. I think they might yeah. pull out and win. Yeah. My, uh, conventional wisdom is also going for Baltimore Ravens just because Lamar Jackson is so freaking amazing in what he does, but my heart is rooting for the Detroit Lions. Oh. That city has suffered for 31 years of not having any playoff appearance. It's time. <laughs> Detroit suffered long enough. Bring it home, Jared Goff. Bring it home, coach. I'm going for Detroit Lions. I know Dustin Sandman Stories is a Detroit native, Detroit fan. I am so fucking happy for your city. I hope they win it all, my guy. So I'm going Detroit Lions, Super Bowl champions. Hell yeah. I love it. The underdog story. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, next question. Is there a movie you're excited to see in 2024? Uh, Deadpool three for sure. <laughs> yeah. That one comes out in like May or something. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Super excited for that one. I'm bad at knowing when movies are coming up though. Same. Uh, Same. <laughs> if it's not out, I have no idea. Uh, like they announced the, um, What's the, is it Oscars? Is it the when they win the, I yeah, think, I think it it's Oscars, Oscars, right? The, like yeah. nominations and half of them I haven't heard of or seen. And I'm like, well, fuck. Uh, so I, I'll say Deadpool three, knowing that I'm probably excited for a couple other ones, but I just can't <laughs> think of them right now. 
Oh my god, I'm the same. I am horrible at watching movies. I think last year I've watched a couple, a total of two movies. Really? Yeah, Barbie, Barbie and Oppenheimer. Okay. <laughs> Those are only, and it just happens to be the same weekend that I watched it. Oh, that's crazy. I am <laughs> so bad at like watching movies or shows. Like I get so I get so intimidated trying to watch new ones. So I just have the same rotation. Office, Brooklyn Nine Nine, yeah, uh, Parks and Rec, yeah. <laughs> and then New Girl over and over and over again. So uh yeah, I'm like really bad at like wanting to watch new stuff. But as far as movie. Uh, there's one trailer that my uh, that Juliet showed me. Really interesting. It, it was like I think it's called Civil War by uh, A24. Um, oh, A20, it's pretty much I love A24 movies. Say, yeah. Like, yeah, the few ones that I've watched are really good. I think Nick Offerman is playing uh, oh, the hell president yes. for that. Okay. So uh, I forgot who the other actress was. That's just the lead actress, but I don't know. It's I'm kind of excited to to see that movie and just A24 reputations is pretty good too. So wanted to check that out. Awesome. Uh, last question. Are you more of a chicken wing or chicken nugget kind of person? Oh, I'm going to get so much flack, but I am a chicken nugget person. <laughs> <gasps> Gasp. Yeah. I oh, mean, no. For me, like uh, like the boneless or whatever, I'll usually get the boneless. I am a, a chicken wing guy. I'm a drums guy, though. I do not like flats. Okay. I See, I prefer drums, too, if I'm going to eat them. Which is perfect because Julia, all she eats is flats. So like every time we split meal, I'm like, perfect. I just want the thing with the most meat on it. That's why I like. <laughs> that's yeah. why I like the boneless. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, I will eat wings. I have no problem with wings. It's just if they're giving me an option, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go boneless. <laughs> yeah, bo- bone it, bone in, and uh, drums for me. I don't know why. It, to me, it's crunchier than the flat for some reason. No, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, that is it for today's episode but before we close it off josh any reviews you want to you want to read out for us my guy so i did something different today john okay let's hear it i mean we've got a we've got a link tree uh donation as well uh, that i'll get to at the end sean will hate it but he's not gonna hear this so he won't know (laughs) but uh, on our rich rich discord i went in and i asked if there were some questions comments or uh, things people wanted us to read in this section so uh, your girl Diana, aka Lazy VB Bra, asked, "Goat, what are your favorite topics to discuss on the show? Food, racism, and smut. <laughs> True, <laughs> that is your favorite. That's my shit. Yeah, I, uh, uh, acoustic, acoustic gal also asked, like, what's your favorite kind of story? Uh, and they they mentioned like food related, hot tea, neck beards, etc. And I gotta say, mine's probably hot tea." I'm a very, mm. I love the gossip. I love the, mm. the tea stories. I love when it gets juicy. Girl. When there's Ooh. like updates and like uh, second posts from like the spouse of the OP who was accusing them of stuff. I love that kind of stuff where it's like. Give me all the racist shit. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> Wildly different. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are probably my favorite. The the tea stories or even like, even like real life drama. I'll get sometimes on TikToks that are like, part three of this uh, drama. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who either of these people are, but I am invested. I'm so invested. <laughs> I get it, dude. Yeah, I hella yeah. get it. Yeah, it's like all the TLC shows where you're watching <laughs> just for the drama yes, and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So I stubbed my dough said uh, nice, specifically for our foodies. So I think this was supposed to be for Sean and John. Uh, what's the grossest food you've ever had to eat and be polite about? Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. I'm not going to say names, but it, they are, uh, of their name, the name of their restaurant. They're a martial artist. Like I'll just put it that that's the name of the restaurant. Okay. Um, not, not owner affiliated by them. And this was located in Wichita, Kansas. And and I always talk shit about Wichita, <laughs> Kansas cause I hate that place. Um, <laughs> the worst sushi I've ever eaten in my life. Oh, like the grossest one. Yeah, I can't I imagine up. the sushi there would be good. <laughs> yeah. So that was like a mistake on my end for yeah. going and trusting that. But boy, it's the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. Damn. That's tough. <laughs> uh, I think mine is just, uh, so Sienna and I went to like a tapas restaurant around here for Valentine's mm. day a couple of years ago. Everything was bang and it was awesome. Awesome food. And then the, I don't know. It was like, one of the courses came out and it's like, it's like one 
piece of like a thing comes out basically for each person. Uh, and it was, uh, I think it was shallots or, uh, okay. Scallops. Is that like the fish? Uh, yeah. 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 It's like, it looks like, it's like, it looks white. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, took a bite out of it and it was the most disgusting <laughs> Really? My body had a reaction to it that I've never Damn. had before. You may have cried during food. I had a, an instant spit it out of my mouth. Reaction. Really? Damn. I, I fucking just like, love scallops. This is disgusting. But I was like, is it the texture that you don't like? I don't, it was everything, dude. I hated the texture. Really? But yeah, it was like oh. the flavor, everything. Everything was wrong with it. And I was just like, this is the worst thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck. Uh, Love scallops. So, I mean, I did not eat it, but I was, I tried not to make us like a, a reaction to. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> too big. But yeah, that was the only time I've ever had that kind of reaction to food. And it's stuck God with damn. me ever since. <laughs> I feel like we have a theme in this in this episode. It's crying and food. <laughs> yeah, true. I, I didn't cry, but it was, it was. Would have been the closest I've ever gotten to it, maybe. <laughs> Uh, Charlie asks, favorite video games from the last five years? Ooh, last five years. I uh, gotta say. That's uh, tough. Yeah. A lot I, of shitty I, I, video I, games. <laughs> there has been a lot of shitty video games. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, for sure, one of them. Uh, the God of War series, both Ragnarok and, and the, the, just the God of War. Uh, really loved, um, Horizon, also really great. Um. Oh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, Red Red Dead Redemption Two is another good. One. Elden Ring was pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. Baldur's Gate has been awesome. I need to play that. I yeah, played it's it a great game. You'd love it, actually, John. I think. Oh, role play. Yeah, it's 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 got everything. I think uh, that you. Everyone would like. said I should be a bard, so like I will be trying to fuck everything <laughs> that moves in that game. I could no see doubt. that. Uh, <laughs> I, I yeah, I'd probably say Red Dead or um, great game. Uh, Baldur's Gate would probably be the top. For me, I mean, I play Overwatch 2 a lot, but it's not, it's definitely not the best game. <laughs> it's very poorly made, but uh, yeah, those would probably be up there. Uh, and then Charlie also asked a pet you would really, really love to have, even if not totally realistic. Uh, to clarify, uh, as an example, I really would love to have a Savannah cat someday, but I'm not as rich as John. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, not realistic. Maybe like a Pokemon, be cool. Oh, like we're like talking about like a fictional that we can. Oh, have? I don't know. <laughs> they said not realistic. Oh, I, I, so. I, I could do like a fictional and a non a, a, an actual real real pet, I guess. For pet, uh, I'd actually want a, a Maine Coon. I actually like cats, <sighs> uh, even though I've never really had one. Yeah. Um, and then as far as dogs, I love Malamutes. I love Samoyeds. Uh, it's just Texas is not a great place to have those type of dogs because yeah, uh, it's it hot. gets really hot here. Um, and they have big shits, but I guess like a fictional, fictional animal that I'd want to have, uh, Appa from, uh, last, from the last airbender. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The big fluffy so guy. Yeah. 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 That's a good answer. Yeah. I mean, Sienna and I want a dog someday, so I don't know. We're not sure quite what we want yet, but it'd be like a medium to large size dog. So that'd be my realistic. And then, yeah, maybe like a squirtle or something is my, <laughs> my unrealistic. Uh, yeah. So that, that's, that would be my answer. All right. We'll do one more question here and then get it. I got a couple, uh, one review and then we got the donation. So tired caterpillar said, what story makes your heart melt or unforgettable life lesson that stuck with you from your family, a friend or a stranger, a life lesson. That was man, y'all gonna make me. You want me to cry again? <laughs> Shit. Uh, and just recency bias. Honestly, that that story we read today uh, by oh um, yeah Uno Zippo Hippo. I needed that big time just to get like a perspective on like you know just how to appreciate things. Like we're again uh, going back to that point. We're just so busy of like the day to day of just the grind and just you know just having to like worry about like life that you never really stop and realize that appreciate things in front of you so recency bias but that really hit home for me today and i really needed to hear that yeah uh story probably the mama lynn is the one that stuck with me the longest <laughs> oh yeah uh, as a heartwarming story and then life lesson one of the biggest ones i got was when i was in grade 11 so i played soccer pretty competitively 
uh, up until that point. And I'd quit because I, it was becoming a lot. I was also failing, <laughs> failing school. So I had to choose. Uh, and I knew I, I wasn't that good. So I wasn't going to, you know, make it in the big times or anything like that. You never know. You could have been a famous soccer star, brother. No, I, I don't think I was good enough. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'd quit and it kind of shattered my plans and reality for a bit. And I had a teacher that uh, pulled me aside because I was definitely depressed at this point and it was clearly showing. He said, hey, like, you got tons of stuff going for you. I, I know you're like, because he was also, he coached soccer and stuff like that. Uh, and he was like, uh, trust me, you got way more ahead of you in life and uh, you're going to look back on this and see it as a stepping stone to some bigger, better things. And uh, uh, yeah, that, that, one, that final, like I, I, I only cried once uh, in, in like a, do it here again. <laughs> no, Let's yeah, share a moment in a school setting. I mean, and, and that was like, that was the one time I just yeah. broke down. I mean, luckily it was just one-on-one talking. Uh, but yeah, that gave me like a wake up call to be like, okay, I have other things. I don't need to just do this. Yeah. That, those hit that's, the most though, man. Those like private and like personal moments. Yeah. Those, those are the ones that stick with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. It hit me. <laughs> Even yeah. now thinking back on it, it's like, damn, that was, uh, yeah. It was, it, Let me it, see a tear. Yeah. Let me see a tear. <laughs> no, just I, one. That's all I, I asked for. I've done enough therapy to talk about that. One. <laughs> I'm not going to cry about it right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good moment. Uh, all right. So uh, in that same thread, uh, Bibliophilia, a.k.a. Stacy. Uh, said, I just want to say what hooked me was that you three, you are three men who are humble, open, respectful, and supportive of marginalized groups, empathetic, and seem so genuine. You're always willing to hear each other's opinion and ask to be proven wrong. And your friendship dynamic is awesome example of real, deep, authentic, healthy male friendship. This is sadly so rare to see in a world where very many people are just awful. You all brighten my day. This rich rich is actually teacher broke broke but I will always make sure you guys are budgeted and accounted for. Thank you for Pay being amazing. Pay the goddamn amazing. teachers. <laughs> yeah, the, Pay 100%. the fucking teachers, man. My God. Yeah. Uh, but thank you very much for that, Stacey. You're the best. If we can't make best. your budget, that's okay. We, we understand. Uh, we just, understand. Just don't tell Sean we said that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't, he won't know. He won't know. <laughs> he won't know. He won't know. And then we got a link tree uh, ooh, donation. Ooh, ang- anger inducing. For Sean, anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're happy about it. Uh, this one's from Melissa, I believe. And it says, you guys are the best. I laughed so hard during your impressed Sean of an Aussie mm. accent, even though it God came damn. out like a Kiwi accent. Uh, in brackets, <laughs> New Zealand. Love the show. It keeps me going. Much love from Aussie. Uh, from nice. Aus- Australia. Thank you. So unfortunately, Sean wasn't here to hear that one. But yeah. Also he fortunate because he might be pissed that it wasn't a Venmo. <laughs> he would be. He would be. So thank you very much for that, Melissa. She sends $10. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And that's what I got for today, John. I awesome. Might have got you over an hour for the show. No, it's all good. And I, I, I do got a couple couple too. And this is like more, more like dialogue heavy uh, episode um, and, and more like personal uh personal anecdotes from us in the, in this episode. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. It's nice to change it up a, a few, a few times, but uh, I have a couple things and I also have a link tree donation as well. Um, one message I received from, from joy. Uh, I'm not going to say their whole name cause I don't want people getting docs, but uh, they put, I just sent $20 Venmo to Sean from <gasps> not going to say your name. And it wouldn't <laughs> let me send my whole message on there. So sorry. It's long. I know you get so many messages, so it's okay if no one ever sees this or responds. Hi, guys. I've been a loyal listener since I discovered y'all in 2022. Long story short, your pod has been with me through severe lows and the highest of highs. I used to be in a terrible situationship, and listening to you three showed me that good men do exist and that I was not where I needed to be. Over the last year, I've been on a major single gal slash self-love slash inner healing journey. Hell yes. Hell yes. I'm happy to say I've landed my dream job that starts after I graduate with my master's degree in May. That's in three months, Joy. Let's fucking go. That's awesome. And as of last month, and I put after a whole year of staying single, I found the most wonderful man when I least expected it. He meets all of my race standards and then some. So sorry this is so long, but I wanted to fully convey how incredibly grateful I am for you three, plus your significant others, Plus all the guests you've had. Thank you for setting incredible standards and for leading with love and compassion. 
Keep being you. Take care of yourselves. And I can't wait for another great year of, of Reddit on Wiki. Sending love from Cleveland, Ohio. And then put P.S. I can't wait to sign up for your Patreon once I have a real job and a real salary. So Damn. congratulations in advance, Joy. We are so fucking proud of you. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. And uh, can't wait to watch you rock the world with uh, your master's degree. Yes, yes. Let us know. Like, Show us like a graduation video or something, if that's something you want to share. But proud of you. Proud oh, of yeah. you. Proud of you, Joy. Uh, next message, this one is from Anouk, and apologies if I'm um, mispronouncing your name, Anouk, but they put, hey, I wanted to message you guys to let you know how great your podcast is and how much I appreciate all the work you all put into it. All the work that Josh puts into it. I mean, um, it's a joint effort. <laughs> I mean, you do more, most of the effort. So um, I've been listening to it for a long time now, and they put not sure when I started, but it was before the one year anniversary. Oh, and damn. it's become... That's a long time. That's long time. <laughs> and it's become a regular part of my day. Your conversations are always so respectful and insightful, which I really appreciate. And I always have a great time listening to you banter. I always try to listen to the episodes as soon as they come out. And I'm currently listening to some of your older episodes for the third time. Holy. <laughs> yeah. Holy. A nuke. Damn. What's going on? Is everything okay? Um, <laughs> It's become a great way for me to relax after a day of work. And this is the part that I might cry again. Um, last week, my dog unexpectedly passed away at a young age, which absolutely devastated me. That night, I just couldn't sleep as thoughts of my dog kept racing through my head. And after hours of trying to fall asleep, I had the idea of listening to one of your old episodes. And it was exactly what I needed as it calmed my mind enough to eventually be able to turn it off and fall asleep soon after. I've been listening to Reddit on Wiki a lot the whole week, and it's helped me immensely in my grieving process. So thank you all for making this wonderful podcast, and I hope to one day be able to become a patron, as I'd really like to repay you for brightening my days with every episode you release. Yeah, I've been there. Like losing a dog is awful. It's tough. Um, like it's losing a family member, basically. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, but we shared a nice message together on Nuke, and hopefully, like you. You feel the sentiment that like we are really truly sorry for your loss. Yeah, yeah. Last one, Josh. Thank you for hanging with me, brother. Uh, but you'll you'll appreciate this because this is another Linktree donation that Sean hates. Okay. And this was there another one? Lin I missed it. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. Interesting. Lindsay bought us 25 coffees. Oh. So that must be buy me a coffee. Buy then, me huh? a coffee. Interesting. Okay, so that was from buy me a coffee, and they put hi from Canada. <gasps> Woo. Specifically from uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Is that oh, pretty close? Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was that was just uh, inherent. I, I didn't <laughs> take your money back. We don't want it. <laughs> You're gonna love this part, Josh. Uh, hi from uh, Canada, especially Hamilton, Ontario, for Josh. Where the people are also assholes, and our dollars <laughs> is shit. <laughs> Yes. This will cover <laughs> this will cover 14% of one month for Sean's Equinox membership. <laughs> I may be a rich motherfucker, but god damn those initiation fees. I only have two patron memberships and y'all made the cut. LOL. Love you guys so much. Thanks for the natural serotonin boost. So goddamn Hamilton, Ontario oh, getting yeah. some strays in this fucking episode. <laughs> no, I mean, thank you very much, Lindsay. Uh, sorry for shitting on Hamilton. <laughs> Hey, they should have done them themselves. If you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like Saskatchewan, you know, DLC of Canada. <laughs> no, Hamilton's not a DLC, but it's just, it's, uh, yeah, it's Hamilton. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah. That's what's Texas. So, yeah, well, the same. it's a city. Sure. So what's a, oh, what's well, a terrible city in Texas? Texas? Uh, Fort Worth. Sure. It's Fort, sure. Fort let's, Worth. Let's, let's, go, let's just go with that. Sorry, Fort Worth. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Everywhere's cuts and strays. Anything else, Josh, you want to cover? No, I think that was, has a very emotionally exhausting oh episode. Oh my God, <laughs> I am. You know what? Honestly, I was kind of having like a, a rough day before this, but I feel so much better. Good. Like, I, feel like, I feel like I needed to let that out. So uh, yeah, that, was a, that was a good way for me to kind of unwind. But that is it for this week with Maniacs. Again, uh, a little kind of different, very uh, conversation-heavy episode, but ho hopefully y'all uh, y'all um, enjoyed that a little bit. But Get your Valentine um, merch. You know, 
Josh, go ahead and plug that shit for us, my boy. Spread the giant and get your Val and Giant merch today. Buy Censor it for this. a partner. <laughs> 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 Buy it for a partner, a friend, uh, a situationship, whatever you want to do. You know, a fling. Yeah, fling. Um, yeah, there are all kinds of stuff you can get it for. Uh, and and yeah, spread spread giant this this February. <laughs> I can't believe this is a thing now. <laughs> Uh, oh, again, shout out to Janelle for that awesome design and uh, yes. be on the lookout because there are more on the way. We got a lot of fire merch that are coming out and, and Janelle is whipping up some good ones. Yeah, we got a few, quite a few ideas coming. I'm oh, yeah, for. they're coming. They're coming. Just like, oh, I shouldn't go there. It was almost an episode. Just like but the anyways, giants will be. Like the giants <laughs> will be once you spread them. But that is it for this week, Wicked Maniacs. Thank you again for rocking with us. Uh, you know where to find us. Show notes. Our links are in the show notes. Follow us everywhere on social media. Share it. Share it to everybody. Your situationship. Your flings. Everything. Spread the good word. Just how you spread the giant. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you this Friday for another Am I the Asshole episode. But till then, toodles. Bye. Get therapy.